What is up YouTube, Nuisance Carl here, and today I'm going to be doing an oil change on the good old BMW drift car right behind me. It's been about 2,000 miles and 4 track days, so I figured it's a good time. But on top of that, I'm going to be sending an oil sample to get analyzed by a company called Blackstone Laboratories. I found out about this company uh, back from my HPDE days uh, with the BRZ. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the HPDEs are essentially high performance driving events. Grip driving. Simple, right? But I noticed a lot of people in the drift community don't really talk about oil analysis, so I figured I would share this information with you guys. So this company conducts four tests. They do spectral examination, they do uh, insolubles tests, they do viscosity tests, and they do a flashpoint test. Uh, the spectral test essentially tells you what elements are in your oil. Uh, it'll tell you, for example, like what sort of metals or any additives. And this will essentially tell you how much uh, wear is going on in your engine. Uh, the insoluble test, number two, um, that will tell you how well your oil filter is doing and if your oil has oxidized or not, or to what extent your oil is oxidized. Number three is the viscosity test, which will tell you uh, what kind of contamination is going on in your oil. So if there's any fuel, uh, excess moisture, or any coolant, it'll tell you that. It'll also tell you if your oil has broken down at all, so if it's overheated, or if you have overheated your oil at the track, or wherever, really, it'll tell you that. And number four is the flashpoint test, which will essentially tell you the same thing, uh, if there's any contamination in the oil. I think they use those last two um, kind of in conjunction to kind of get a, a better definition of what is exactly going on in your oil. So there you have it. I've linked their website down in the description so that you can see like uh, any other information or all the information that I provided to you, you can take a look at that, as well as a sample report. So the cool thing about this oil analysis is Blackstone Laboratories actually sends you a report displaying their findings and they comment on those findings uh, to give you like any recommendations or uh, essentially what that information needs. So definitely a big plus. So here is the package that Blackstone Laboratories has sent me. Uh, in order to get this, you just go to the website and you put in your information and they send this to you for free. Uh, you essentially only pay for the lab test uh, once you send it in. I think it's about 28 bucks. So you get it. Here's your sample bottle. They give you a card where you can put all your information. That kind of stuff. Here's basically a sample report. You can't really see it with my camera, but they do have a sample report on their website. So you can go ahead and check that out. So before I actually start the oil change, I'm gonna go out for a quick 15 minute drive. That way I can get the oil nice and mixed up, nice and warm. Uh, it's gonna be a better sample. So I'm gonna do that really quick. There's my daily driver and my sort of weekend warrior. I don't drive it at the track anymore. Definitely do some videos on that though. I really want to go back to the track, uh, primarily Button Willow, to try and pe beat my uh, personal best last time I went. I think I got like a two, it was like 217 on stock tires and terrible driving. So definitely want to beat that, trying to break the sub 210s. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start draining the oil. I'm going to let it run for a little bit. And I'm going to take my little white bottle and then get a sample. I'm going to try to get it as close to like halfway between it pouring out and it being empty. So let's see how this turns out. All right, so let it pour. I'm gonna get towards the middle. And I'll take a sample. I'll take a sample right here. And there you have it. Just cap it off. Got my sample. So, let's go ahead and finish the oil change. While that's draining, I got the oil sample right here. I got it cleaned off as much as I could. Now what we're gonna do, is first off, we're gonna wrap it in this uh, absorbent mat or cloth that they provided. Now that, it's gonna go into this baggie. 
There we go. Sealed up. I gotta make sure that I fill out my piece of paper that they provided me. It's just car information, stuff like that. I'm gonna stick that in here. Cool. And now I just need to stick this thing in there. And that's it. I'm gonna send it off and we're gonna actually wait for the results and we can go over that. So after a bit of lagging on my end, I finally sent in my OO sample. Got a report back. As you can see in the top right, E46 Drift Build 1. This isn't the only time I'm going to be sending samples. I'm going to be doing this probably every oil change just to see how things are going on in my engine. So, looking at the comments section, um, you can see that they noted that the universal averages for the M54 are at 6,500 miles. I'm about 5,000 miles short of that. Maybe I could extend my oil interval. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But for now, uh, we're going to see what happens. They did mention that trends over time will be useful in determining what's normal. I definitely agree with that because the more data, the better. They also mentioned that most metals could be considered elevated for the short interval. Um, could be normal. Again, we'll see what happens when I get more data. They did mention that sodium could show coolant, though usually potassium is um, also present. You'll see that uh, in the next segment of the video. And the amount of fuel that was found in the oil looks to be okay. So here's a spectral analysis. I'm not going to go through every single element. Um, you can actually go through uh, Blackstone Laboratory's website, which I will link down below. Um, that'll actually allow you to hover over each of these elements and see where they are coming from. Uh, one thing that I want to point out is that this oil did go through 1,825 miles. Uh, you know, it's a little bit low, but um, it was with four track days, so I decided to change it sooner rather than later. The car has a lot of miles, 192,615. So I kind of picked and choose uh, which ones to actually go over. Um, you know, something that caught my eye. Uh, one of them is molybdenum. It's a little bit low, but that's mainly because um, it is an anti-wear additive. It's usually found uh, uh, when you're breaking in an engine and it'll usually disappear over time. I'm not too concerned about that. Boron is a detergent and a dispersant additive. It is also an antifreeze inhibitor. As you can see here, it is quite high. But they didn't mention anything about that, so I'm going to assume that that is for the most part good. Obviously, they are the experts on this. Sodium was also high. Um, they said a combination of sodium and potassium usually indicates that coolant is present. Potassium is actually quite low, as I did mention in the comments section. So um, we're going to leave that as an in question, and we will see what happens over time. I did switch from antifreeze to plain water and water wetter, so we're going to see how that affects the readings over time. Calcium was also high. However, that is just a detergent additive, so I'm not too concerned about that. Other than that, nothing too alarming yet. Um, no bad news is good news, I guess. So we're going to proceed at risk. And we're going to move on to the next section. So viscosity turned out pretty good. Uh, they're both within spec. Flashpoint, however, was below 375. That's most likely because of fuel. As you can see below, fuel percentage is at 0.5%, which is less than 2%. That's good. Antifreeze is still in question, so we're going to see how that plays out with the next couple of tests that I do. Water did not show up, and insolubles is less than 0.6%. That means my oil filter is doing good, so we're good to go. Huge shout out to Blackstone Laboratories for sending me a sample bottle so I could send in a sample, and thank you for providing the report. I am in no way affiliated with Blackstone Laboratories, nor is this video sponsored by them. I do believe this is a really good tool to see how your engine is wearing and what is really going on in your engine. So other than that, that is all for this video. Um, I hope this information helped you out a lot and I hope that this tool gets used more often in the drift community. With that being said, that is all for this video and I will catch you guys next time.